holy, 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 holy. We sing holy, 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 holy. Sing holy, 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 oh holy, holy. Sibera 
that is within me, I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord. With all that is within me, I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. Oh, I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. Oh, I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. I worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. Oh, I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. Oh, I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will worship
I will worship you, Lord. All that is within me, I worship you. I will worship you, Lord. All I have within me, I will worship you, Lord. I will worship you, Lord. All I have within me, I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all I have within me. I will worship you. I will worship you, Lord, with all I have within me. I will worship
of God tonight where are the prayers being lifted up to God tonight church why does thou sleep awake 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 put on your strength awake awake put on your strength church arise put on your strength church tonight let the sounds of heaven break forth let the sounds of heaven
Father, we break our hearts before you right now. We break our hearts before you right now, oh God. We make room for you. We make room for your anointing. We make room for your presence. Oh God, come have habitation in our lives. Have free course to do your will through our lives, oh God. Father, we have made, we have made a place for you. We continually make a place for you in our lives, oh God. We seek your face, we seek your face, oh God. All we want is your kingdom. All we want is your kingdom. All we want is your things, oh God. All we want is heaven. Oh, all we want is you, Jesus. All we want is you, Jesus. All we want is you, Jesus. Ile asia tiana na marila es ya khel hel tiana na gati ala sapakhanu. Ela variant ya la khala masagli di ulghila ina matala na asia tiana na makhali bi. I love you so la maya tiana masasi.
Father, thank you that you stir up a passion in every person's heart. Father, that your word be in every person's mouth. Let your fire be in every person's soul to lift up your voice and to cry out for revival fire to sweep the church. Father, for the moving of your spirit to come in this day and in this time. We thank you that your fire falls upon your church. Holy Spirit, thank you that you come and move upon us. Father, we cry out for the moving of your spirit, for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in fire, a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire upon your church, O God. Thank you, Father, for the sounds of prophecy, for the tongues, for the interpretation of tongues, for the words of wisdom, for the words of knowledge, for miracles. Father, for the gift of faith that has been poured out. Father, that the church will operate as you have purposed and you have ordained, showing forth the body of Christ, every member fitly joined together. Father, this is our desire. This is our passion. We thank you that you come and you move upon us, O God. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift of God. Father, we must have the moving of your Holy Ghost. Father, we must have a fresh outpouring. A fresh outpouring. A revival fire. Father, we will put our shoulder to the plow. Father, we thank you that you have strengthened us for this day and for this time to be strong for the fight, to be equipped for the battle, for the battle rages on. Father, I thank you that every person will take a hold of your strength and your power to step in, to step into the battle and engage in the fight, to realize the responsibility of every person, to stand in the gap, to cry out for their generation. Father, this is a desperate time, a desperate hour, and we must have you. Father, we must have the moving of your spirit. Father, we know that your eyes go to and fro looking for someone to use. We ask you to use us, for it is now time for your signs. It is now time for your wonders. Pour out, pour out, pour out, pour out your Holy Ghost and fire. Father, I ask that by your Holy Spirit you put in every person's heart a passionate prayer, a pressure, a passionate cry, a desperation to seek after you, O God, to seek after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you how to pray. The Holy Spirit wants to invite you into a realm of living that is different than the realm and the lifestyle that you've currently been living. It's a good life. It's a wonderful life. It is the life of the Spirit. But you have to willingly participate. The voice of prophecy isn't always comfortable. Usually the opposite. It's usually very uncomfortable. It usually it's a, it's a bit of a prod. But if you hear what it is, if you hear the cry that it is from the Father's heart, because that's what prophecy is. It's the cries of the Father's heart, crying out, looking for a people that, is that are going to set aside everything of this world. 
They're going to set aside all the earthly cares and interests and pressures and worries and concerns and have an eternal vision. The vision of eternal life. Looking at everything through a lens of eternity. Everything that we do, everything that, that, that is about our lives. We ask, how is this going to be lived out through eternity? What is this going to look like through the eyes of eternity? Otherwise, it's just going to be temporal, fleeting pleasures. Here today, gone tomorrow. The call is always there. I have purposed, and more importantly, Father has purposed for you to leave this place changed tonight. A fresh fire, a fresh passion, a deeper understanding, a deeper knowledge. Look, I want to know I want to know God, and I want to know everything about God, and I want to learn how to live like God lives. To love like God loves. To joy like God joys. To peace like God peace. To have the good, like the goodness like God has goodness. Right? It redefines everything about our lives. Our experiences, what we've known, what we've lived through, defines currently how we view love, how we view joy, peace, a good time. I want all of that to be completely redefined in my life. Why not? Why not? God has this invitation. Listen, God, God has this invitation, and he says, and he says, come, forget everything you've known, forget the life that you have lived, and come and let me teach you the ways of life. Let me teach you what it truly means to be alive. Look, if you can experience that, if we would make this transition from the earthly into the heavenly, ministry, reaching the lost, just living our life becomes so easy because you're then able to communicate heaven. We want to step over into the realms of heaven. We want to live in the realms of heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that tonight, but I want to encourage you and I want to exhort you Receive. You have to be in a place of receptivity in order to receive, right? Otherwise, I can talk and I'll get encouraged and I'll be blessed, but you'll go home the same. And I don't want that. And more importantly, the Father doesn't want that. You can sit down. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Radical. Thank you, Ruth. Isn't it awesome? Uh, we're so blessed. Isn't it awesome to have people w that, that can lead us in worship that can break through? That can break through. The Holy Ghost has purposed and expects each one of us to carry that. Why shouldn't we be able to step into a place and change the atmosphere? That's what, that's what Jesus did. Everywhere Jesus went, he literally changed the atmosphere of a place. Have you ever, have you ever you know, walked into a meeting, gone into a place where... Everybody's stressed out, right? There's, they got to they meet their numbers. It's the end of the quarter. It, whatever's going on, there's a bad situation. There's a disaster that just happened. There's a fire. The house just burned out. You ever stepped into a room and the atmosphere is charged with stress and anxiety and worry and ugh? You step into it and you, if you will be sensitive enough to recognize it, you will immediately come under that. And then there's this exchange of worry and anxiety, and it's a disaster. And it tail spins out from there. What if, just consider for a moment, what if we as the representatives of Jesus Christ were able to step into that exact same situation and bring the peace and completely change the atmosphere? That's what we are supposed to do. That's what we are supposed to do. Now, you can't do that if you don't live in that realm of peace, if you don't have that realm of love, that realm of joy, and are not continually submitting and yielding yourself to the Holy Ghost to receive that for yourself, right? This is a relationship. It's an individual, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Does everybody realize that? Who in here has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Good. Now, let's go deeper in that relationship. Look, any relationship that's not becoming more lovely, that's not getting 
deeper, more joyous, stoking that fire, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go off the rails, right? It's not going to go where God has purposed a relationship to go. The most important relationship to me is my relationship with Jesus Christ. And if, I, if I'm not devoted to passionately pursuing him, passionately pursuing him on a daily basis, something in my heart is wrong. Because I clearly know the love that the Father has for me. I know what Jesus has poured out for me. He gave his life just for me. So I want to go deeper every single day, every single day, every single day. So I'm saying all of this to encourage you. Let the Holy Ghost touch you here in this place tonight. Let him touch you with a fresh revelation, a fresh experience, an encounter with the living God. An encounter with the living God where that everything about your life can literally change. He wants to do it. He's purposed to do it. Every single day, the invitation is clearly there. We have a special opportunity when we come together as a church to feel this presence of God, to have this atmosphere set, this moving of the Holy Spirit, this fresh wind, this fire, all these wonderful things that he has poured out upon his church. But if you come in and just sit, you're going to leave the same way you came in. And that is the worst thing I can think of. It's a concept that are described in one word, religion. It's dead. It's lifeless. And it's wild. It's, a mind, it's kind of a mind-boggling concept to come into a place charged, supercharged with the, with the Holy Ghost, this atmosphere of the Spirit of God, and to have a religious session. No thanks. And I know that nobody in here wants that. But it's, you know, it's, look, long day, middle of the week. It's, you know, kind of tired. Other things are going on. Where is your perspective? And that's what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. Because if you look at things in the perspective of eternity, you're not going to let yourself be consumed by this world. You're not going to give yourself so much to this world and so much to your own earthly pleasures that you don't have time for God, that you don't have the strength for God. It's a mindset change. More importantly, it's a heart change. It's a heart change. It's a desires change. So that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about. But before I do, a couple quick things. Pastor Mark gave a few instructions. Pastor Mark and Pastor Ann are up at the MTC this week. God is doing such amazing things. I can't even, and it's unfortunate, but most of the stuff I just have to talk to God about because if I told you, you wouldn't believe me, okay? And it's just tough to get sometimes because you look around and you're like, there's not really that many people here. Are we really doing the things that, that we say we're doing, that we think we're doing? I can assure you we are doing those things and them to an exponential level. God has literally hooked us up with the foremost leaders in the world in terms of world missions across the, across the globe. And, and he is... He has blessed us with this land and the MTC and everything that's going on with it to be a place that is going to last until Jesus comes. It's very, very exciting, but it's a lot of work. And Pastor Mark is up there laboring away, as always. So he sends his love and his greetings. And, his, and we need your prayers, guys. Most importantly, we need your prayer. We've got, we've got to recognize that Satan is fighting against the advancement of the gospel. Right? Does everyone realize that? Satan's not too happy about us preaching the gospel. So we need someone to engage in prayer with us. Engage in prayer. So I want to do two things really quick. Um, I want you to prepare an offering tonight to sow. Okay? Give into the kingdom. God is doing awesome things right now. God is doing awesome things. And you might have experienced this. Here's a personal experience of mine. It seems that when there is a time to engage and an opportunity in God to sow, there's, and these, hap, these, are, these aren't all the time, there's these special opportunities where you can, you can hook up with a move of the Spirit, you can hook up with something that God is doing, and it's a special appointment, like Sunday night, right? Not, I, can, I don't remember the last time there was that anointing, that focused faith to see those offerings, right? So here's, here's what will happen oftentimes. Maybe this is, maybe this is just me. But usually, money is tightest around those times. It's like, of all the times I can't afford to give, 
Pastor Mark's calling for the offering, right? And the double offering, right? But guess what? It, guess what? If you will move past the bank account and the limitations of money and you will step out in faith, dude, the reaping, <laughs> the reaping is amazing. The reaping is amazing. It's awesome. So I just wanted to encourage you in saying that I know you guys are giving and you're giving generously and it's awesome, but we need a lot. So I know that you need a miracle. I know the church needs a miracle. And God has the answer for both of us. He says, you give and I'll supply. So what we're going to do, can you guys stick with me on this? This offering is going to be offering number one. Okay, this offering basket. So which offering basket is this? Number one. Cool. This offering basket is number two. Okay, which one is this? Two. One and two. We are so blessed to have, as one of our dear and personal friends, the evangelist John Ward. He is preparing to do a crusade in Mexico that is going to be nation-shaking, a radical, radical crusade. So you have the opportunity to go and participate in reaching souls in Mexico. I love the fact that you can make money work for you, right? You can... Working, you can, you can work hard, right, but you can get so far. But then God can bless you with finances, and you can put your money to work. There's no better way and no better place to put your money to work than in the kingdom, okay? So we have this awesome opportunity. Uh, the evangelist, John Ward, has been used in radical, radical ways to reach the unreached people groups. God has given him anointing and a vision to see amazing, amazing things happen. He is carrying the fire of revival. He is carrying this message of the Holy Ghost to salvation, and we have the opportunity to sow into that to see great multitudes reached for the gospel and for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's basket number two. I want you to prepare an offering. We're gonna, we're, I'm going to receive it now. Okay, so basket number one, over here. Basket number two for the evangelist John Ward, over here, okay? So as soon as you have an offering ready, please come and give. Before you do, I want you to listen, because I'm going to pray. And we're going to hook up in faith to see a great miracle, a great miracle take place. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for the gift of faith to be stirred upon every heart. Father, you are the one that supplies every need, and we look to you, Father, for provision, for protection, and perfection. Father, I thank you that you stir up faith in every heart, that they give generously so they might receive generously, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for supernatural multiplication. We thank you for this great opportunity to hook up with the, with the divine moving of the Holy Ghost on the earth today. We thank you for your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come and give. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have no idea how it is already 8.30. That's crazy, but I'm going to try to get through some of this because I know that it will be a blessing and an encouragement to you. We want to always do what the Holy Ghost leads us to do. We want to always move with the Holy Ghost. I have purposed in my life to do what the Holy Spirit is doing, to go where he goes, to say what he wants me to say, to do whatever he wants me to do. And I don't want to ever talk or do anything outside of his leading and his guiding. And it's a wonderful way to live. It's a blessed way to live. It's an obedient way to live, right? Perfect obedience. There is always a wonderful and exuberant and abundant blessing in perfect obedience. 
hearing the word of the Father, hearing the instruction of the Lord, and obeying it quickly, accurately, perfect obedience, right? I know one of the things that blesses my dad very, very much is that I'm an obedient son. I know I've talked to many parents. What's one thing that blesses you? What's something that your kids do that really is just it, is awesome? Quick obedience. To have a child that is, is obedient, perfectly obedient, and quickly obedient, it blesses them. That's the Father's heart. To have children, you and I, that are walking in perfect obedience to Him. It's what we want to do. It's what we want to, want to do. So I want to encourage you, when you hear the word of the Lord go forth, when you hear instruction, obey it. Obey it. And obey it accurately. Because it's usually given with specifics. You want to follow those specifics. Amen? Okay. Let's talk about this a little bit. So what I want to talk to you about is um, what I mentioned earlier. Eternity. Eternal life. Eternal consequences. Right? How many people remember the, uh, one of the things Pastor Mark said Sunday night? He said, I want you to go and look up scriptures on eternal life. Did anybody do that? One, we have an obedient son. Nobody else did that? Did anybody remember hearing that? You want to you want to listen, you want to listen closely cuz that was a great one. And if you would have, you'd be even more prepped for tonight. But that's okay. I've got a lot of scriptures for you. Eternal life. Eternal life. It's a concept that I really enjoy to just think about and, and meditate on and especially within the 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 uh you know, the context of the scriptures on eternal life. How many people just will sit and meditate on the word, just kind of spend some time thinking? Does anybody spend time just thinking? No, it's a, leg it's a legitimate question because most of the time there's either earbuds in your ears or uh, a smartphone in front of your face, and there's not a lot of time to just think and meditate and ponder, especially the word of God. I would encourage you to spend a few minutes and just think because these concepts are great. And they're my, I, like to, I like to think about things that are just completely, you know, almost irrational. And eternal life is one that it's really hard to rationalize, to wrap your head around. Okay, but in thinking about those as I'm studying out the scriptures, what does that look like? I didn't get very far in understanding the concept much better, but I did enjoy some fresh revelation and, and that joy of, man, that's life, eternal life. And what is, so for me, really the thing, that the big takeaway for me was eternal life means that I get to spend the rest of eternity with my Savior, Jesus Christ. I get to spend the rest of eternity with the Father, with the Holy Spirit. That, for me, sums up what eternal life is, that interaction for the rest of eternity with the Lord Jesus. So that's something you can think about a little bit. I want to start here. Man, good grief. I got so much to get through. We're not even going to get close. Oh, well, here we go. We're going to start in John 5, 36. Okay? <clears throat> We're going to do John 5, 36 to 42. Okay, and so what we have here is Jesus speaking. And um, there's some guys that think they're pretty well set. They think they've got it figured out. They're in the right religion. They're practicing the right things, right? The people of Israel, the children of Israel, the children of God, right? Everybody's with me? Everybody knows this story. Everyone's read through John chapter 5, right? Okay, good. So that's kind of the little bit of the, of the background. So we're going to start in, um, we'll start in verse 36. It's kind of hard to break into this, but we'll start in 36 and we'll go through uh, verse 39. <clears throat> so Jesus is speaking to them and he says, I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works with the, which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me, and the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent him you believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So pretty heavy every message here, right? Jesus comes out and he's saying, look, you guys saw John. Now you're seeing me. I've got the witness of the Father, and you're not receiving that. You think you have eternal life. Well, you better search the scriptures because you're saying you're, you're off. You're wrong. 
okay? So it's so easy to get in a place of, okay, yeah, I understand what's going on. I've got this Christian walk. I'm doing things right. Well, let me ask the question, are you really? Where is your, where is your perspective of eternity? How is it that you are really living out your life? What does that look like on a daily basis? Because Jesus says you better search the scriptures and you better, you better go through and examine your heart. So we're going to go through a number of scriptures here that, that really exemplify and uh, challenge everything that we, uh, that we do and how we live our lives. So in, uh, let's, next scripture we're going to be going to is 2 Timothy uh, 3, 1 through 5. And we're going to hear the testimony of Paul, how things will come. And, you know, it's so easy for, for us to justify our state and our mind and, and to convince ourselves of, uh, of things that aren't necessarily reality. So, where are we going? We're going to 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. So, here we go. This... Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, um, in, in, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power of. From such, turn away. So this warning here from Paul comes and says, look, clearly there's the things that are listed out that, we're not, that, are, that are the sins, things you're not to be participating in. But there's a form of godliness that many believe they have. They believe they're in right standing. They believe they're okay, that things are good. But they deny the power thereof. They, they deny the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a challenge to make sure, hey, what's going on in, in our lives? Let's examine our own hearts and say, is it true that the reality of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, is witnessed in our lives? If we look at every action within an eternal perspective, we can see that God clearly isn't changing, right? Right? The psalmist says, and we're going to look at the scripture, the psalmist talks about, David talks about his life being so short, right? We think that we have this long time to live, this extensive amount of years or whatever the case may be. But when you step back and you look at that across the span of eternity, it's so small. So for whatever reason in our own thoughts, we think, okay, well, this is now okay. Social, social norms, cultural changes. Oh, well, this is now acceptable. No, it's not. God isn't changing. God is eternal. And the same principles that were established in eternity, eternity past are going to be established and, and true all the way through eternity future. So to think that things will change just within our lifetime or, or things are now acceptable is not a, good, not a good perspective. Having that eternal perspective is what we want to have. Having that eternal, that eternal lens, eternal life, eternal consequences of every action. You with me? Good. Let's go. And read that. <clears throat> we're going to look at, the next thing we're going to look at is Psalms 39, verses 4 and 5. God's going to continue to judge sin the same way that he always has. God's not going to change in his perspective and in those things that he's laid out. So let's go through and look, and let's look at some of the wisdom that has been given. Psalms 39, verses 4 and 5. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. So one of the things that is important for us to do is we look and we study. and we're also, So the next thing we're going to look at is, um, is Solomon. Right? We're going to go to Ecclesiastes 1. Looking at 
how these men that knew God and had the fellowship with God looked at their lives, right? Looking back over it and saying, you know, we have ideas as young, young men and even, even middle-aged, or even old, thinking, okay, these, these are the things that are important in life. Well, if we look at the scriptures and we see those aged men and, and especially the prophets look back over their lives and say, what is it that was truly valuable? What is it that God wants us to be pursuing? What is it that in the light of eternity is of consequence, right? I think that as you get older, you get closer to death, you start looking at that, that life that you lived with a different perspective, saying, what is it that was truly valuable? What is it that was truly worth living for? And a great one, and a great example of this, is Solomon. So, in Ecclesiastes, well, it's really that first section, 1 to 14, it talking about how Solomon had, he literally had everything. He had the wisdom, he had the wealth, he had the riches. Whatever he wanted, he got it, right? But what does he say? What is the conclusion of the matter? Vanity of vanities. All is vanity and vexation of spirit. He said, look, it's all, it's all worthless. What a, what, a, what a waste, okay? So I want to go and read. Actually, I'm going to have you jump over to Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. So after all of this, after everything that he had, all of these amazing, this amazing life, right? Or, or seemingly amazing. Here we go, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All these things that he was so passionate about pursuing in life, he looks at and reflects back on all vanity. It all goes away. We work so hard for all these things, all these temporal things, and then what? It's, it's gone, used by someone else. The prophet Jeremiah talks about it too. Jeremiah 9. Let's go look at this one. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Jeremiah 9, 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glories glory in this, that he has, under, that he has understand and knows me, that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. These are the things that are important to God. Not the strength, the might, the riches, the wisdom of man, but these things that, that God has, has shown for us to participate in, these eternal consequences. Okay, so what I want to do now is jump over to John 6, 47. And I want to show, I want to look at, we're going to get into a few more of these scriptures that, just, that talk about eternal life and the simplicity of what Jesus brings to us. So John 6, 47. Here it is, in such simplicity, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me has everlasting life. It sums it up. Believing on God and looking to live out that life that he, is, that he has purposed. He's all we need. He's our eternal life. The truth of the gospel is all about living in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus living in us. That's so simple. It requires us to live this life and look at everything that Jesus demanded but letting God live in us, and we live in Him. That's where it's at. And when you do that, and you look at that, that life lived out within an eternal view, within an eternal life, that is a life to be looked out and looked back on throughout eternity as a successful, a meaningful life, a life that counted for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Let's go to John chapter 17, verse 3.
And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So here we go. Those, those two, let us, let us know clearly where is the eternal life. It's in Christ Jesus. But now we're going to look at the need that we have to seek after that, to desperately go after the Lord Jesus Christ, to seek him while he may be found. So we can go and look in, let's go to Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures, but I want you to go through them and I want you to study them out. Take, you know, take them down and go back and look at these because these are really, really important. Here we go. Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let's jump over to Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And then let's go to Matthew 7, 13 and 14. So all the scriptures that I just read through, I read through them kind of quick. But I want you to make a note of them. And it's looking at what the, the sum of all those and really one of, the, one of the big takeaways that we need to, to, to look at is the passion and, and the dedication to seeking the Lord with all of our heart, to seek him while he may be found. There's a time window on that, right? Nobody knows the, 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 the span of their life, how long they're going to live. Seeking the Lord while there's that opportunity to find him and seeking him with your whole heart, seeking him desperately having that eternal perspective, looking at it and saying, okay, this is what I have. These are the years that God has given me. What am I going to do within this time? Am I going to seek after God and seek him while he may be found? So let's look at this scripture now. In Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Because there, there are requirements that Jesus lays out. He lets us know What's going on here? And it's in verse 13. Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. It's so easy to get caught up in the things that we're doing in the daily life and just be on the broad way to get off track. God is looking for some people who are going to be walking the straight way. It's a very, very narrow gate. And it's a very straight way. And there is only one way, Jesus Christ. That is going to be lived out through a life that is dedicated to seeking out and studying out. Father, what is this way? Teach me. Lead me. Show me how to walk in the ways of life. Show me the way everlasting that I may go therein. That is the heart that we must have. And when we're looking at this with an eternal perspective, looking at each day that we live out, walking, the straight way and the going through that narrow gate in everything that we do. The call is a call to holiness and righteousness, perfect obedience. It's something that we're so blessed to have here in this place is that message of radical holiness, righteousness. Those are the things that God demands because that is the life of Christ Jesus. Let's go and look at Romans chapter 2 verses 5 to 8.
So we're going to look at a few of the things that God is going to, and we're, we're going to start looking at the judgments of God, how God feels about sin and ungodliness and those things which he has established in his word. So starting in verse 5. <clears throat> but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for the glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath. Father will never bless anything that is not holy, anything that is not righteous, those things that are not His way. His judgments will always be the same. And we say His judgments are true and they are righteous. He's going to demand of us to live out the life of holiness, purity, walking in His ways. Because every person will stand and give an account. Every person will be judged for the deeds that are done in their body, whether they be good or evil. Amen? So we want to be able to give an account and a good report. Everything about our life reflecting those things which God has established. So let's look at 1 Peter 4, 5. First Peter chapter 4, verse 5. Okay, that's just what I just said. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Every person is going to be giving account for their life, that judgment, on that judgment day. Hebrews 9, 27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. God has blessed us with this amazing gift of life. And he's going to hold us accountable for how we lived out that life. Life is very precious to the Father. And he's blessed each and every one of us with, with life. So he's going to hold us accountable for how it is that we walked out each one of our days. How is it that we lived for him? How is it that we brought him glory and honor? Because that is supposed to be the purpose of our life. To live for the kingdom. To live for Christ Jesus. How do we do that on a daily basis? Looking back, you know, I like to just reflect at the end of the day. Father, did I truly live for you today? Did I truly show forth your glory? Did I, did I walk out the life that you purposed for me to walk out today? Because God has a plan for every single day of, of your life, right? He's got a plan for your entire life. You have to break that down into every day that you live. If we will hook up with what God has purposed for us to do with each and every day of our life, we'll start living a different way. We'll start living after a different manner. And that's what we want to do. That's how we're going to see change and revival brought to our region, to our city, to our communities, everywhere we go. If we will be living out on a daily basis this life that God has purposed for us to be living every single day. Amen? Under, understanding the priorities that God has listed out. A house and a car and a good job aren't really very high on God's priority list. He's got different priorities. He's got different things that he wants us to be doing. I want to go over now to Romans 2, verse 7. Understanding the things that the Father values is very important because we want all of our values to line up with those things that the Father values. Amen? To them who by patient, con patient continuance in well-doing seek glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. It's a consistent thing, right? Continually seeking glory and honor. Continually seeking after this. Every single day, looking at your day through this, this eternal perspective. Father, how is this going to bring glory to your name? How is this going to bring honor to your name? These things that I'm doing. How are they looking in terms of this eternal life, this eternal perspective? And then we have some pretty radical examples of Paul, how Paul lived out his life. Let's go and read in um, Philippians 3, verses 11 to 14. Paul says, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, 
either were already perfect, but I follow after him. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Looking continually every single day, pursuing, pursuing, pursuing those things of the kingdom, pressing towards the mark. It's a day, daily relationship, day-to-day relationship, looking how are we running after Jesus? How are our lives being lived out for the gospel of Jesus Christ? So let's go now over 2 Timothy 2.21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So the wonderful thing is, we all understand that there is going to be the day of judgment, but we already have the answers to the test. We already have been given the things that are, that are going to be required of us. Right? God's laid it out. He's clearly showed us what is it that he expects from us. What is it that we are going to have to do in order to show, hey, and it's not about works, but it's about this relationship saying, this, is, this was truly evident in my life that I was living for eternity, living for the kingdom. Because God will judge out with perfect accuracy and perfect equity saying, this is what you did for yourself and this is what you did for me. And we want our lives to truly be living and lived out for the kingdom. Living out with no regret. Always looking to see, Father, this is truly the work that you have called me. This is truly the purpose that you have ordained for my life, to live on this earth. There should be nothing more important to us than seeking after the gift of eternal life. Seeking after that eternity with God. Because that's where, that's where heaven is. That's where Jesus is. That's what Father has set up for us to dwell in. And he's called us. That invitation is there. But there must be the life that lives out those things which he demands. The life of holiness and righteousness. Living for him. Let's go to John chapter 12, verse 25. John 12, 25 says, He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also be, there sh- shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Jesus has called us to deny ourselves, not to pursue the life we want, but His life, to forsake our own ambitions and goals and dreams. Set aside everything that would be a fun life for us. This life you could pick your your dream job and your dream place to live and all the other stuff, and set it all aside. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Christ. What does that look like? Where is it that God would have you living? Where is it God would have you working? All of these things. For me, it's right here because I know that I'm in the perfect will of the Father, living out my life for Jesus Christ. That's what we want, every single one of you, to have a confidence that you know truly you are denying yourself, you've taken up your cross, and you're following Him, living for the kingdom in everything that you do, in everything that you say. Giving yourself to the mission field. For me, San Diego is the mission field right now. There's so many. We've been having such amazing, amazing things happen. God's blessing us. But it's it's ground that's hard in some cases. It's ground that needs water. It's a lot of work. But if we see it as this isn't, this life isn't made, you know, just to go and have, kick back and relax and whatever. We're, We're here to work. God has put us on this earth with a mission, with a purpose. We need to get a hold of that vision and, and press in, get after it, and see these, the, the harvest is so ready. The harvest is so ready. As tough as some of it can be on the other extreme, it's just like God's doing such an amazing thing. It's so easy to see the, the people that are, that are brought in. We want to see that increase. We want to see that increase. We want to see this place packed out, not so we can have a big church, but so that we can start effectively reaching this city for the gospel of Christ Jesus, so that the kingdom of God be revealed in San Diego, California, 
all of Southern California, across the United States, and across the world. I truly believe that. I know that God is going to use us to do these things. We want to participate in that. We want to do everything that God has purposed us to do. And it starts with understanding how is this my life, me personally, how am I living out every day for the kingdom? Well, am I looking at how God judges things? Am I taking into account eternity, the eternal perspective, with everything that I do? Amen? So there's a number of scriptures here. I'm just going to give them to you if you can jot these down. And they're actually, um, a number of them were in the daily bread today. So it was cool. I always enjoy when I'm studying something and doing it. And then Pastor Mark posted on the daily bread. It makes you feel like I know what I'm doing. All right. So I want you to write these down. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read all of them. But the sum of all of them is basically the fact that God is going to judge us. Every single one of us will give an account for the life that we lived, and we want that life to be a life that says, yep, I truly lived for the kingdom. So Acts 10.42 was one of them, Romans 2.16, and 2 Timothy 4.1. God's given us his word to judge us. We already know. I said, this, I said this earlier. We know what God is requiring. We have to actively engage, actively participate in studying out the word, looking at that and saying, okay, am I, am I measuring up? Am I living this life? Where, where is the growth that needs to take place? Where is the maturity that needs to, to be going? God is a loving God, but he's a God of justice and judgment and truth. He can never pardon and never turn a blind eye to sin and ungodliness. He demands truth. He demands his way because he's made it so easy for us. He's made it so easy by the blood of Jesus Christ. We come in, ask for that blood, that cleansing blood, Washed away all the sin so that we can now enter in the, the holies of holies, walk into this life that God, is, that God has purposed. <clears throat> God is not happy with sin. God is not happy with wickedness. The psalmist says God is angry with the wicked every day. We don't want the anger of God anywhere near our lives. We want the blessing of God, and we do that by living out what he has purposed. It's very important to God how we spend our lives. Our time, our energy, our passions, our emotions. He's interested in what we're doing. He's interested in everything about our lives. Everywhere we go. The things that excite us. The things that bum us out. He wants, he's right there in the middle of it. And if we can see that, all right, where am I spending my emotions? Where am I spending my energy? Am I truly giving, it all, giving my all to God? Because he wants it. He asks for it. He says, give me your life. I'll give you my life in exchange for yours, but give me your whole life. Pour out your most, your deepest passions, the greatest excitement. Pour it out on the Father. Because the, re the reciprocation is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. The life of the Holy Ghost, the life of the Spirit. Without Him, there is no life. That's the bottom line of it. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Let's go look at 1 John 5, 11 to 12. And we're also going to look at verse 20. So 1 John 5, 11 to 12 and 20. And this is the record that God has given, un, given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God hath not life. Pretty simple. It sums it up. And then let's jump over to verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So many people are looking for truth. They want to know what is truth, what is, what is reality, what is actually going on. We have the answer right here. The truth of Jesus Christ. The truth is worth Going everywhere with the answer. Be the answer. Every person you encounter, every person that has a need, being that answer. Why? Because you have smarts and skills? No, because you have Jesus Christ. The answer, the way, the truth, the life. We're so blessed to be graced with this life that God has given us. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And to understand that we have a great responsibility with this life that God has given. Because the same way that Jesus walked out every single one of his days, he wants us to, 
to engage and walk out that same way, living the life of Christ Jesus. If we let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, if we let the Holy Ghost truly be there in the morning when we wake up, yielding to Him, surrendering everything about our life, letting Him set the agenda of the day, then there's, there's that flow. There's that flow of the Holy Ghost. I want to jump over to Psalms real quick. We're going to read Psalms 145, 8 and 9. <clears throat> We're going to read 8 and 9, then we're going to jump over and do 17 to 20. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Jump over to verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all of His works. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. Father's just looking. He's just looking for anyone with sincerity and truth to call upon his name. He is, he is truly severe in his judgments, and he is very strict in what he has laid out. The, the path of righteousness, the narrow way and the straight gate. But he's so full of love. He's so full of compassion. He's always beckoning us and just calling us to come live this life, the life of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want everybody to stand with me. <clears throat> Father, you're so good. You're so wonderful. We thank you for your glorious anointing. Thank you for your wonderful presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Father, I ask you for your Holy Ghost to be in this place, to fill every heart, to fill every need. Lord Jesus, we say again tonight, our lives are yours. Father, we do anything you want us to do. We say anything you want us to say. We'll go anywhere you want us to go. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Father, we surrender ourselves to you. We look to you to lead us and to guide us. Father, you are great and you are gracious. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Vi sarà mandato per il suo cuore, va varie visite, le vedi visite, le vanno. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence in this place. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ilar mambav de visi ke levi shop ro gavon supra val visi ke levi si. Thank you, mighty God. Lord Jesus, we love your presence. You're so good, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for this life of the Spirit. This life that you have poured out. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. We just thank you for your leading, for your direction. Holy Spirit, just take control. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come now and you, you, you meet every need. Holy Spirit, that you touch every heart and you touch every life like only you can. Father, every need, every person's need that is in this place, we thank you that you come and you meet it now, that your healing touch be here now. In Jesus' mighty name. If there's anybody that needs prayer, I want you to come up. We'll pray with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I don't know what God has purposed. I know there's some great things tonight, but I just want to be sensitive to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Ghost. 
because he's the one that, that is here to meet the need. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I have prepared or the things I think I want to share. I want the Holy Ghost to have full control, and I want every person to realize that God is here to meet the needs, here to meet every need. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. Take this time to just receive. Right now, the Holy Ghost is pouring out. Just receive what God has purposed to give you tonight. The Holy Spirit is here. He wants your fellowship. He wants your emotions. He wants your excitement. He wants your life. Just be there to pour it out. Just to receive from Him tonight. To receive from Him tonight. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you make every heart receptive to the moving of your spirit right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we wait on you. Father, we wait on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just asking for people's lives tonight. I just hear him asking for your life in this, in this great exchange for, for your, your temporal life, for this eternal life, for this, this thing that will pass away, for this thing that will not pass away, that this thing will go on forever. He's so wrapped up in the temporal, so wrapped up on the thing that's going to fade away one day, so wrapped up and so engulfed in it, and God just calling you, you once again, once again, to this thing that will never pass away, to this thing that will never fade, to this, this eternal life that doesn't start when we die, that begins right now, this eternal life in Jesus that begins right now. The, 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 the temporal, the, the, the earthly will, will drag you down, will, will, will choke this eternal life out, and you won't be able to see it. It will always be something out there. It will be something after you die. It will never be right now that it's meant to be. If you can't see it now, you will not see it later. If you cannot get wrapped up in this eternal life and step out of the temporal and into the eternal now, you will not receive it later. This is, this is why we seek him, why he may be found. He cannot be found after you die. It's done. He's found right now. If you don't find him now, if you don't find eternal life, which is Jesus now, if you don't find your life in him now, there's no hope for you. It's eternal life now, not later. It's eternal life now. He asks again. I just heard him stern and asking again for your life now, for your life now, to step out of your life I, this has been burning in me so strong what Pastor Mark said a, a, a few weeks ago. It's not the things 
that we, it's not the things that we let go of that he's asking us to let go of that makes us sad. It's that life, that pathetic life you hold on to so dearly that makes you sad. If you would let go, if you would release, if you'd finally let go of all the things you think you want so much that you're going to have to give up to have God, to have all the things of God, if you would just give it up, you'd find out this eternal life, this glorious realm. He calls out again tonight asking for your life. Will you just give it to him and not take it back and just give it and just give it and just give it and just give it. Find the life that's in the sun now. It will be too late later. Find the life that's in the sun now. Your life is a vapor. You don't have much time. Find the life in the sun now. This eternal life. Jesus. Heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.